Now he's back on the scene with a new sound and a forthcoming album. His current single, Oh Louise, is already racing up the charts and could well prove to be the kind of success he's been hoping for. In 1982, James Brown presented Juno with an award for the best R&B newcomer to the United States. He became the first British artist ever to do so. On his return to Britain, he found his record company judged his success quite differently. Uh, I think my record company want me to succeed in Britain, but for the wrong reasons. I don't really think that they understand what Junior's about yet. And uh, because of that lack of understanding, Right? They only want me to succeed in as much as, well, hey, we want you to do it this way. We want you to make records like, for instance, Phil Ferrin, or like David Grant, or like whoever is successful at the time. We want you to make records like those people. I find that like a slap in the face when I consider that at the time of doing things like Mama used to say and Too Late, which were in Britain the most successful records that I had, we had actually changed, right, the tempo of records being played at that time. And when you listen to certain people who rip off what you've done, right, and then you talk to somebody at your record company who turns around and tells you that you should be doing the same thing that that artist is doing, do you get what I'm saying? And you created that whole fashion. To me, it's like, well, hold on a minute, do you really listen to what I do? Come on. Like other musicians, Junior finds it increasingly difficult to develop a musical identity. In the past, black artists have been channeled into producing club-based dance music. His manager, Keith Harris, has his own view why this is so. Within the record industry, there are very, very, very few black executives. I'm not going to go so far as to say none, because I'm sure that somebody will dig out one just to prove me wrong. But I think if I said that you could count the black executives in the record industry on one finger, I wouldn't be far wrong. You know, the, the situation is, if you increased the number of black staff in, in the industry, you might then get a better understanding of what has come to be known as black music. Now, black music, as far as I'm concerned, is music made by black people. It can fall into the rock category, it can fall into the jazz, soul, folk music, if you like. But as far as I'm concerned, black people ought to be allowed to make any kind of music they feel like and not be pushed into a corner. OK, Junie, could we just go in on that, come on over? Oh, OK. A bit, bit more macho. All right. Again, this unison, do a unison. Oh man, not I'm the sorry. harmony. I'm, re I, I'm sorry. Okay. All right, not to worry. Right. Here we go. With his latest album, Junior hopes to shatter the myth that disco music is the only route for black British artists. Experimenting with all aspects of his musical background, he has produced a distinctive record which marks a new departure from the old Junior sound. This time round, I didn't want to do a track which people had heard before. So what we decided was we'd go rock because it was something that I'd always wanted to experiment with. And I, I mean, like, I'm British. I'm, I'm born here. I'm born in England. And, like, rock and roll, pop, and all that kind of stuff, as well as reggae and soul, are all part of my root. So I wanted to express the lyrical content of the song in the strongest possible way. And I didn't want to do it through doing dance music. Because if I did it through doing dance music, it would come over as like another dance track, but with like heavy political lyrics on it. We don't need nobody messing with our minds. Got a whole lot of money giving us no time. Come over. Okay, we'll drop you in right there at the head of that uh, the bamp. 
track it. Yeah.